Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Good afternoon and welcome to the Inspired Choices Network. You're listening to Financially Speaking with your host, Kathy Cook Noble. And today we are chatting once again about something financial because in my world everything leads to finances somehow and that's not a bad thing. That's not a, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just somehow money always seems to creep in and, and need to have our attention. So that's what we do here is we talk about different money concepts. We talk about financial ideas or or anything that overwhelms people or they're afraid to ask somebody else about, they can ask us about and we can help them work through it or get some ideas or get some information. So if you're out there with a question that you just are desperate to ask somebody <clears throat> and you either don't know who to ask or you don't want to spend money and chase around the answers, just send it in and we'll answer it for you because that's uh, the whole concept of our show because it's very simple for you to understand your own stuff and I thoroughly believe everybody can understand what they have and everybody can have what they want. There's a, there's an abundance of money out there for you to tap into. There's an abundance of opportunity out there. So that's what we do here is try and break down all these concepts and make them easy to understand. So if there's something out there, you just let us know and we will research it for you or get you the answers or send you in the right direction. And that's generally what we do on the inspired at the inspired choices network too we like to help people just break down the difficult parts of their life whether it be finances whether it be relationships whether it be parenting whether it be business partnerships whatever it is and help people get on track and and be successful so you will find all the other hosts and uh shows on the network are very user friendly i'm going to say because they break things down in a way that is very manageable, it's very understandable, and it's great for everybody to uh, ad- adapt to their own personal life and situation. So having said that, what do I do? I'm in my, my day job. My my full-time job is uh, I have a finance business. I'm a licensed financial advisor as well as a bookkeeper. And we help small businesses generally, but uh, we're, we don't discriminate. If it's a solopreneur or a large organization, we help them too. But uh, for the most part, the bulk of the people we, we seem to work with are the smaller businesses to get them on track with their bookkeeping and, and get them on a path of profitability. And uh, same in the my finance practice as an advisor. I help people understand their money, either get out of debt or organize their debt in a way where they can control it and um, make money, invest their money, save for their future, uh, do estate planning, do tax planning, do the whole package because that's really what it's all about. And I think that's that's the the key piece really that that a lot of us are missing when I talk to people um that it's the whole package it's not just one particular item or one particular uh problem that is is what's holding people back it's that you have to look at the whole picture and there might be some debt and I see this a lot and I use this as an example but there might be some debt and a debt could be due to a bad business decision or a bad business partnership or uh, a, a bad relationship, either a marriage breakdown or a partnership or family, you know, partnership. Um, and those things happen. And and I actually, now that I think about it, I, I take that back. It's not a bad business decision. There's no bad decisions. There's all these great learning opportunities. So if you're out there and you're you're thinking about getting into business or you weren't successful in one part of the business on the expansion or implementation. That's actually more of a learning opportunity and and then it is uh, not a success because I, I can tell you from experience and I can tell you from dealing with a lot of people that they learn more from those experiences than they do from the successes. The success, success is the easy part, right? You do it, it works, you make money, yay, congratulations, high five yourself, that's awesome. And that's our goal. But to get to that point, there's a lot of uh, pieces that we have to try, and that's where we're not always the most successful, but we are extremely successful in how we learn and how we move forward and how we maneuver through the next part of it. So 
I, I like to think everything we do is a success and everything we do is an opportunity. And, and it makes a big difference with your mindset when you think of it like that instead of beating yourself up all the time. So today we're going to tackle a co- uh, topic that has huge, huge, huge financial impact and implications to a lot of people in a lot of cases. And that is the cost of divorce. So if we know anybody out there that's ever been divorced or going through a divorce or is contemplating divorce or who has been divorced and done it a couple times, uh, there's always a cost associated with it. Now, when I say divorce... What did everybody think of? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word divorce? You think of two people in a marriage partnership that are separating, don't you? Because that's typically what people think, and then 90% of the time that's what we're talking about. But there's a lot of other kinds of divorce too. And I see a lot of this in my practice and in my life. And there's uh, there's people who get divorced who are partners in a business. That's a divorce. A partnership, you separate you untangle yourselves from each other financially, emotionally, physically, part from the, the organization. That too is a divorce. Uh, siblings that don't decide not to get along or, speak, or not to speak to each other, make a conscious effort not to be in contact, it's a divorce of sorts too. So when I think of divorce, uh, a lot of people I know instantly go to the uh, marriage partnership But I always think there's so much more to divorce than just two people being in a marriage. Because when you think about it, the elements of a divorce are you separate your, your, your physical selves from being in the same location. You separate your property from each other. You disentangle your finances from each other. You unravel any emotions that are associated with that separation. And you go your separate ways. So you literally take your lives and take them away from each other so that you're not working with each other anymore in any capacity. And that's divorce. And and a lot of times you see uh, businesses have divorces and they don't call it the same thing as they don't call it necessarily a divorce. But that's what it is. And there's a lot of partnerships that get affected both financially and emotionally. Take, for example, uh, the most recent, most famous, most expensive divorce of our time so far, and that's Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Him and his wife, uh, Mackenzie, they've separated it and divorced after 25 years. Now, Amazon has substantial amount of financial implications. And these are all things that when you get divorced that you have to think about. And the funny thing is, when people get divorced, whether it's through a business or whether it's through a personal relationship, uh, there's a tendency to have emotions run very high. And when, ero- when, when you have your emotions running very high, then logic doesn't usually flow as high. It usually runs very low. And what happens is people get so caught up in how they feel that they end up spending a lot more money and a lot more time than they need to. So in Jeff Bezos' case, it was... Um, now, this is all we saw in the public. Obviously, there's a whole lot of stuff that took place behind the scenes. We don't know how long they had been talking about it. They don't know, we don't know how long they were working on it. But to us in the public, it was very smooth and it was very uh, seamless. And we're talking about the, the wealthiest man in the world that's worth north of $150 billion. So when you see something like that, it, to me, it was a lesson that it's absolutely possible with anybody because people get caught up on, and I'm going to say principle of things, and that's a lawyer's dream because that's where the lawyers make a lot of money when it's about the principle of it. It's about the principle of the fact that it's my plate or it's my spoon or whatever it is. So principles is how the lawyers get very, very rich. But when you see someone like Jeff Bezos come out and he, he announces that, you know, we're getting divorced after 25 years, and there's no mud slinging on either side of them. Now, mind you, the press tried to stir up a little bit, but between the two of them, they obviously agreed for whatever, however they did it, that they were going to be amicable. They have four children together. They have built Amazon to this massive company that it is today. And it was um, very, very delicate for them because they could have lost control of their company. 
because if they had set everything up, there could have been a there wouldn't have Jeff Bezos himself wouldn't have been the majority shareholder or the controlling shareholder of Amazon. So there would be a whole different dynamic of a company and that could be changed. And in this case, when it's the company like Amazon, which everybody knows and everybody's I'm sure used or at least Googled Amazon to see what it is, or they've been on Amazon to see what they sell. Uh, I'm sure we all have heard of it or, or at least somehow maneuvered around it. Uh, that could have changed the entire dynamic and future of the company because Jeff wouldn't have had control of it and he wouldn't have been able to do implement all the plans that they had. But they were very amicable and I'm sure they paid a huge penny for their lawyers because they're, they would be using very high priced lawyers. But they didn't get into court slinging mud. They didn't drag it on. There was no principle of that's my plate, my dishes, my car, my carpet, my, you know, my my doll, my spoon, my fork, whatever that people get in the principle of. And they came out and it was very smooth. And it, it really, to me, watching that and you're waiting for people there. And I think the public was waiting to see some sort of uh, mudslinging or it getting very nasty because we've seen divorces of celebrities and and uh, Hollywood especially in the press and it gets ugly and it dragged on and lots of money gets spent and lawyers get very, very wealthy. And at the end of the day, the the same result is the same result. The two people disentangle their lives, they separate and they go their own way. And it, a lot of the time it just depends on how much money gets, gets used up in that process. So when I think of divorce, I think there is different kinds of divorce, not just a married couple, but I also think when you see somebody like Jeff Bezos and his wife, Mackenzie Bezos, when they're separating their lives from each other from a marriage divorce and they're separating their lives from a corporate divorce, one of the biggest companies in the world, and they can do it in a way that seems very amicable and seems very uh, friendly towards themselves and their children and their family, then I think we all can do it. And I'm not saying that if they can do it, we can do it because they're better or smarter or anything else. They have more money than anybody because he's the richest man in the world. And they were able to put the money aside because a lot of times people with that kind of money, they have money to throw out a problem and then they end up wasting a lot of money. So when they can be very conscious of not wasting a lot of money and they have many billions of dollars to spend, then I think we can be very conscious of it and say, you know what, we don't have to get all nasty and, and spend all kinds of money with lawyers to, because I want to tell the person that I'm divorcing that I would really like to have a blue blanket, so I'm going to spend $450 an hour with a lawyer to tell him or her that that's what I want, and then they can reply for $450 an hour and say yes or no. So those are the kind of things I've seen happen. Um, a lot of times people, there's, and I, I totally get when people, there's some of you that are going to be thinking, yeah, but you don't know the kind of person I'm divorcing. Absolutely right. There's a lot of people that do not have the emotional intelligence that will not have the the forward thinking to, to want to do that. It takes two parties. I absolutely get that. But the best we can do is try and keep it as amicable as we can and try and keep it as financially friendly and emotionally friendly as possible. So that is what we're going to talk about today. And when we talk about divorce, now hopefully I'll get you thinking a little bit more than just a marriage breakdown and a marriage departure from each other. And it actually has a lot to do with businesses and partnerships and uh, siblings and family and marriages and children and parents and all kinds of different combinations of people that it actually constitutes a divorce. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the cost of divorce. And the other part of it is, so now that we're thinking divorce in a different way, the cost, when I say cost, most people think money. And I get that. That's like 95% of the time when people think about a cost. But there's also a cost to you emotionally. And that's the other part that we're going to look at. So we're going to take our first break of the night. And we come back, we'll continue our conversation about divorce. You are listening to Financially Speaking with myself, Kathy Cook Noble, on the Inspired Choices Network. And when we return, we're going to continue to talk about the cost of divorce. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television.
too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815 880 8255. Canada 613-800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back everyone. I am Kathy Cook Noble on the Inspired Choices Network and you are listening to Financially Speaking. And today we are talking about the cost of divorce. And this is one of those topics that we see all the time or we hear about all the time and we actually have not tackled it on the show as a discussion. And this is one of the topics that was suggested by someone to do and that's what we're doing. So if you have com uh, topics that you want to suggest, we're uh, always happy to tackle those for you. And this is one of them. So the cost of divorce. So when we just before the break, we were talking about how I define divorce, and that is the separation of anybody or anything from another person or another thing, such as a business partnership, marriage, uh, friendship, whatever the case may be. And the cost is financial, and the cost is emotional. There's a lot of different costs to it, but uh, we'll just talk about those two for a minute. And when we talk about when we think about a divorce, we think. Typically, I know we think marriage, divorce. So in Canada, I'm just going to give you an example. People think, how much does it cost to get divorced? How much financial dollars does it is it going to take for me to untangle my life from this other person? And the funny thing is, when you think about divorce, people think it's so expensive. It's going to cost me so much money. And it certainly can. Don't get me wrong. It, it absolutely can. And that comes back to how you as an individual are going to approach it. There's a lot of people that approach it, I will fight tooth and nail. And if I don't get everything, you'll get nothing. And it's very emotionally charged, which makes it very financially uh, inefficient. But the people who are very emotionally focused are also the ones that come out much better financially from it. And I know it's difficult. I know some people are, oh, yeah, it's easy for you to say you don't understand. Yeah, I get it. When you're right in the heat of it and you're upset and emotions are high and, and you're upset and he's upset or she's upset or whoever it is, and all you're thinking about is how you feel, that's when the lawyer makes a lot of money. And I'm just today our topic of the cost of divorce, the intention is to help people understand and put it in perspective a little bit about what divorce is and what cost means. And... Cost, you know, it's easy to measure cost and finances. I do it every day, all day long, and I love it. It's an easy formula. It's math. It's got a, it's a straight line most of the time. And even when it's not most of the time, you can figure it out even when it veers off. The math is easy. The cost to your, your, your soul or the cost to your emotions is, is completely 
immeasurable. And people need to really focus on that, I think, when you're going through any kind of divorce. How is this going to impact the rest of my life? How am I going to be able to live with this? How am I going to emotionally be able to handle this? Because honestly, when I, I deal with finances every day, and, and this is going to be weird coming for me, but it's just money. There's a lot of money out there. You can make more money. You can uh, you can get a job that pays you more money. You can start a business. You can build money. I mean, Jeff Bezos, uh, who I talked about at the beginning, he left a good paying job to start a business called Amazon, and it worked out exceptionally well. And I get it. There's a ton of stories of people who who didn't make it in business, and they're not all Jeff Bezos. Totally get it. But there's an awful lot of stories of successes. And there's a lot of money out there. So when you think of it like that, then you look at the divorce. You say, okay, if I take the money out of it and the financial part out of it, now I need to heal. My emotional healing has to, to be accounted for. And that's the part that stays with you for the rest of your life. Money comes, money goes. You spend it, you get it, you receive it, you can make more of it. It's it's just, it has no emotional ties to you whatsoever. I can promise you there is not one $10 bill out there that's just like, oh, I so love you. I wish you'd find me. I wish you would come and get me. Like money's like, hey, I'm here if you want me. Take me. If you don't, fine. Uh, whatever. Somebody else will. Like that's how if money if money had a voice, that's pretty much how it would sound. But when you're going through a divorce of, or separation of any kind, then that is the part where it's really going to affect you emotionally. The finances, yeah, that's going to be a part of it. But it's the financial part that you really, really, really want to, um, I, th- I think, be very aware of because that's the part that affects your health. That, you know, all the stress that, that does things to your health, which will do things to the time that you have here on this earth. So all the things that affect you with your health are all the parts that affect the quality of your life. Money is part of it. It's It's a small part of it. You people make it to be a big part of it. Um, I mean, I it's a big part of my life because that's what I do all day. But at the end of the day, I know it's just money and there's lots of it out there. So we can all go get it. It's not a problem. But how do we deal with divorce? So when we think about the cost of divorce, it doesn't have to be in a marriage situation, for example. It, it doesn't have to be thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, even though those are the stories that we hear about. Those are all the the horror stories that people talk about. The total cost to obtain a divorce in Ontario, Canada, is about $632, if you can believe it. That's the court fees. The first payment is about $212, and that's part of the application when you file. And then you pay $302, or sorry, $202 and $10, and that's collected by the Federal Department of Justice. And then additional costs are $420, and they're paid before the divorce is reviewed by the court. So if you want to apply to the court to get a divorce, it's about 632 bucks in Canada. Now, what's the average person in Ontario? Now, that's what it costs in Ontario. Now, the and it's very similar across the board, across states, across provinces, across countries. Very similar. There's a there's a, a fee for divorce. You file with the court. There's rules that you follow. And if everybody can keep themselves emotionally in check, this is how it could play out. Now, that's that's if I'm getting divorced in a marriage situation and we've decided uh, there's obviously a lot of factors. I'm going to talk about those in a minute that there's going to be factors that we talk about, obviously children and separation of property and matrimonial home and, and other real estate or the cottage or the boat or whatever, the dogs, the cats, the fish, all that kind of stuff has to be talked about. But if we just set that aside and took a very logical, practical approach to it and said, I'm taking the blue dishes, you're taking the green dishes, you know, we're going to have custody of the kids on X, Y, and Z schedule, then that's, or X, Y, and Z schedule for my American friends, uh, then that's what we do. We sit down, we're very logical about it, and then we apply it at the court, we do the paperwork, boom, we're done, right? Not often do we hear of that happening. So the average person in Ontario, because I just gave the, the, the price to pay in Ontario, so I'm going to try and keep it comparing apples to apples. So the average... Uh, cost in Ontario for a divorce, uh, uncontested, uncontested. Now, the difference between uncontested and contested is we, the two people getting divorced, agree that we, the two people are getting divorced. It's uncontested. We, the two people getting divorced, one of the two is not wanting to get divorced and is fighting it. That's contested. So I'm assuming it's uncontested and we're being 
um, dealing with a situation like that. The average cost of a contested divorce ranges from about $1,000 to just over $2,500, with the average being $1,353. Now, it's a little bit more than uh, just filing it yourself. That's, you know, if you have a lawyer involved. A contested divorce, however, can range on average anywhere between $7,200 to $75,000. So the average in 2011 was about $13,000. So why does that range fluctuate so much? That's the emotion. So that's where people are fighting over custody of the fish or the hamster or they're fighting over certain dishes or it's I don't want to get divorced and you want to get divorced. Who knows? There's all kinds of scenarios that play out with this. But that's for dollars, when you put in perspective for dollars, that's how it is. It it doesn't have to be super expensive. It doesn't have to bankrupt somebody. It doesn't have to break the bank. It doesn't have to make one person worse off than the other. And those are all the things that happen because it's, like I said before, it's a very highly charged emotional situation. You know, and there's a quote that I have on the wall in my uh, over my desk. And it says, hatred corrodes the container it is held in. And the reason I have that there is because it reminds me every day when people come in and they're emotionally charged or we're separating assets because of a divorce or I've had people come in and ask me if they can afford to get divorced, you know, one partner without the other. And when you see stuff like that, that reminds me that that anger, that hatred, that high emotionally charged situation will ruin the person more so than it will ruin the finances. Because that, if you think about it, all that emotion that you keep inside, that you internalize, that you think about, you dream about, that you talk about, all that negativity and all that anger, frustration, and um, hatred that you feel, that you once felt differently about the person, remember, that that will ruin you because that causes you to be completely stressed out. It causes you to get ulcers and and gain weight or lose weight too too much or it causes you to be get um, acid reflux it, all these there's so many symptoms of stress that our body takes on that it is very very damaging and very subconscious in a lot of cases so I have that there to remind me that hatred corrodes the container it is held in and I believe my job yes as an advisor my job is to make money as a bookkeeper my job is to make sure the books are good and that's what I do but when an emotionally charged situation comes in, <clears throat> like partners separating, whether it's through business or through marriage or through friendship or through whatever, uh, I try and remember for them and try and remind them in a nice, gentle way that uh, ruining, trying to ruin the other person and your focus is on that, that's going to ruin you in the end. So these are things that I like people to keep in mind because at the end of the day, when you get divorced, stuff's going to be split. The courts, whether you're in Canada, the United States, UK, Australia, doesn't matter where you are, all the courts have have uh, rules that they follow on separation of property and separation of um, business, separation of children for custody, all that stuff. So those are the th- things we try and keep in, in mind when we talk about this stuff. <clears throat> so there's a bunch of steps involved and that you go through when you get divorced. I want to share with you when we come back from the break, the top 10 don'ts for divorce recovery. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about the divorce and how that separation of your life from somebody else's and your finances from somebody else's and your assets from somebody else's and how we can do that and be somewhat more successful um, with what we're doing and how long it takes to do that. Because it's not all going to happen overnight. And when it's a marriage divorce, it's not today I decided to get divorced, tomorrow I am divorced. There's a process, there's a timing, there's there's stuff that has to be done. And we'll talk about that when we come back. And we'll. my goal is to make it as user-friendly as we possibly can, like we do with everything else in finance. So we're going to take our next break. You are listening <clears throat> excuse me, to Financially Speaking with myself, Kathy Cook-Noble on the Inspired Choices Network. And when we return, we are going to continue to talk about the cost of divorce. We'll be right back. 
too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Money is complicated, right? Actually, no, it's not. You don't have to be a trader on Wall Street to get a handle on your money. TV shows often instill fear to keep you believing you can't understand it or do anything yourself. If dealing with your finances brings up a lot of other F words, then you need to read All Ladies Should Use the F Word, A Guide to Loving Your Finances by Kathy Cook Noble. Kathy helps you take control of your finances and leave the other F word, fear, in the dust. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspire Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I am Kathy Cook-Noble, and you are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network, where we help you make decisions and break it down for you to make your life easier and less complicated and more manageable on the on the network. That's what we do. And then Financially Speaking, that's what we do on a financial basis. So my goal is to help you on the financial side, and our goal on the network is to help you on life and business and the full implementation package. Which, by the way, if you're out there and you're thinking, I have a very good idea, I have a very good uh, opportunity for people, and I wish I could get my message out there, I wish I could share with people this great strategy I have or great industry that I'm in on how to make things work better for people, then you need to talk to Christine McIver from Inspired Choices Network and get your own show, become your own host, and share all that knowledge with people out there because without sharing our gifts with each other, we can't help each other. And when we can't help each other, we don't make this a better place to live. So uh, I believe if you're out there and you have something that you want to share with the rest of the world, then this is the great opportunity and great platform for you to do it. So I encourage you to get in touch with our fearless leader here at the Inspired Choices Network because she she will gladly help you and she will walk you through it. And if you don't have experience like I did on the, the show, then she will train you and teach you and hold your hand for as long as you need it. So there's no excuse if you're out there and you think you can do it, you want to do it, you d- it's a dream of yours to do it, then what are you waiting for? This is your chance. So call and talk to Christine. Join us on our inspiredchoicesnetwork.com and get in touch with her. Great opportunity. So that's that for everybody to understand and I will I'm looking forward to meeting you whoever you are out there and your new shared information and wealth of knowledge. So today we are talking about the cost of divorce. And when I think of divorce, I I don't necessarily think of it as marriage. I always think of it as two two parties going their separate ways and I see a lot of it in business through partnerships and stuff like that. And I've dealt with that for many 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 years in business with partnerships, and um, it's the same situation. So for me, it was because I've seen it in partnerships and uh, a lot of partnerships in business that have, have not worked, then I got to to see it in a different kind of way, I would say, because in that particular case, it's usually not, so I mean, for sure you can have some uh, emotions run wild, but for the most part, you try and keep it pretty uh pretty unemotional as best you can. Um, but business is very emotional for people and they think it's a pretty static thing, but it's really not. Like 
a lot of people, your business extension, you have this perception, it's an extension of you, your baby, your your business that you put all this time and effort into. So it can be very emotionally charged, very, very similar to a, a two, two-person marriage breakdown. So I want to put one myth to rest out there in Canada. There is no such thing as a legal separation in Canada. And I am by no stretch a lawyer. I don't pretend to be a lawyer. I'm not an expert in family law by any stretch of the imagination. I don't pretend to. I don't want to be. Um, I'm just pure looking at it as cost. But there's some things out there that I was investigating in my research. And a legal separation is a myth. You are legally separated as soon as you and your spouse are living separate and apart. And... Just so you know, there's no time limit to being separated. A divorce doesn't automatically occur because you've been separated X amount of years or so long or whatever. So that's a myth, an urban legend, if you will, that uh, there's a legal separation. Once you're separated, you're legally separated. Boom, that's it. It's not that complicated. So how long do you need to be separated before you divorce? Now, this is in Canada. All everybody's a little bit different. I didn't research every country out there, so I just want to give you a sampling of of how it works. But a separation is when you and your spouse have lived apart for at least one year before a divorce judgment is made by the court. So does that mean that you have to live apart and then apply to the court? No, of course not. You can start the divorce action during that period, but until the year has passed, uh, you have to wait to file for the divorce. So you can have everything in place, and then there you go. And and that's a very efficient way to do it, quite honestly, if you can take the emotion out of it. You can say, okay, we're separating, and you're going to, you might live upstairs, I might live downstairs. We still separated our lives. That's the legal separation, living separate and apart. So then what happens is we'll work on, this, if we have children, custody of the children, custody of the pets, we're going to separate our assets. You take the cottage, I'll take the the boat, whatever, however it works. And you're going to go through all this, and then you're going to apply to the court and get the blessing of the court to approve it. So that sounds simple enough, doesn't it? <laughs> um, do you need a lawyer to get divorced? You don't, you're not required to have a lawyer. Most people get a lawyer because the courts sometimes make it difficult to navigate through. But for the, for the absolute answer, it's no. But if you do have a lawyer, then you can still make it easy and amicable. Um, if you have children, this is probably in my, my estimation, this is where it gets the most muddy is when you have children and it's the custody of the children. So if you have, cust- if you have children and one person is going to have custody and the other one's going to pay support, this is where people get into, um, a little bit more of an emotional, emotionally charged conversation. But if you say, okay, if it's not emotionally charged, the court doesn't matter how much emotion is involved because there's a guideline. There is a chart that says, if you make X, you pay Y. That's it. So just to give you an example, if you make $30,000 a year in Ontario, Canada, and you have one child and you're paying child support, you're going to be paying $256 a month. If you have three kids, you're going to be paying $621 a month. That's based on your income. That's the chart. It comes off the chart. End of story. That's what they do. Now, the chart values might change based on cost of living and so on and inflation, whatever. But that's it. They look up the chart and they say, you make this, you pay that. That's how it works. So, again, the court keeps things very unemotional, right? Um, So when we look at things, I I like to think, well, if that's how the court's looking at it, maybe if I look at it that way, it won't cost uh, as much to do, right? So when you come into divorces, I said before the, the break that there was um, the ten top 10 don'ts for a divorce recovery. So people ask how long it takes to recover from a divorce. Now, if it's a high emotionally charged divorce, obviously it's going to take a lot longer. If it's a high cost and it gets into where you have spent all your cash or you've had to sell assets to pay for lawyers, then it's going to take you longer to recover financially because just the simple math and the simple compounding effect is the time value of money. 
So if you've taken three years to get divorced and you've used up a bunch of your cash or a bunch of your investments or your savings, it's going to take you longer to rebuild that than it did the first 10 years because the compounding is going to take longer um, as you get older and you have less time. So, of course, it takes a bit longer. But in a typical recovery, and I don't know what typical, I put that in air quotes because it's not there's nothing typical, but how long it takes depends on a whole lot of things. And it, part of the the factors it includes would be how long you've been together, either through marriage or a business, uh, how good the relationship was. So if it was really, really good and it went really, really bad, then that's harder. Um, if How committed you were to the other person, whether the divorce was a surprise or not. So if all of a sudden it was, hey, Saturday afternoon, surprise, I want a divorce on the marriage side, and you had no idea it was coming then that is going to be a huge surprise to you. Uh, whether or not there's children, whether or not one or the other person in a marriage relationship is involved in a new relationship, uh, your personality is going to depend on how long it takes you to recover. How old you are, your socioeconomic status, there's a whole whack of things, including your financial situation, um, your employment situation. All these things are going to really factor in how long it takes you to recover from a divorce. So when you're doing this recovery, a few things, well, there's, I mean, you know, I like my lists. So I found the top 10 don'ts for a divorce recovery that uh, Susan Peace Gadua came uh, up with when she was writing her article about divorce. And the top 10 don'ts are for divorce recovery are, one, don't, ask for help and try to do it all alone. So don't be one of those people that asks for help and then you don't listen and don't do it, don't take advice. Don't talk about your grief or feelings. Count on others to tell you what you need. Don't be in your own power. Four, stick your head in the sand and hope it will go away. Don't do that. Five, don't pretend you're fine or try and hold it all together. Six, you can be upset with yourself for still feeling bad, sad, scared, or angry, or whatever you're feeling. Seven is try to push your negative emotions away and be only in a better feeling emotions. Don't do that. It's, deal with your feelings. I know it's hard to do, especially when I when I say it. For those of you that would know me, you'd be like, yeah, right, because I'm usually more of a robot. So trying to deal with your emotions is a harder thing. The other thing is don't trust that things will work out. Like, Don't be like that. Just... Go through the process and do what you need to do to look after you. And don't be a perfectionist and think you mustn't make any errors. So you don't have to do all those things. You're allowed to feel things. You're allowed to work through them. So here are the top 10 do's for divorce recovery. Ask for help and let help in. Talk about your grief with others. Get as much information as you can about the divorce process. Face each obstacle as it arises. Let others know when you're not feeling well. Allow your feelings to come to the surface. Allow yourself to feel whenever you feel. So feel what you feel whenever you want to need, whenever you need to feel it. Accept your new reality and move on when it's appropriate to move on. And that doesn't mean you have to like it. And have trust and faith that things will work out. And finally, be willing to make mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen no matter how well you're prepared for it. It's just part of the process. So those are some do's for divorce recovery because divorce takes however long it takes each person it's not a formula this is not a math a plus b equals c this is each person is different each circumstance is different every circumstance is different every person is different every situation is different and everybody will be dealing with it at their own pace so those are some tips on what to do and what not to do uh we are going to take our final break of the night and when we come back, we will just finish our conversation about the cost of divorce and how we deal with it. You are listening to Financially Speaking with myself, Kathy Cook Noble, on the Inspired Choices Network. And when we return, we're going to continue our conversation on the cost of divorce. We will be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. 
by tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. You'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Money is complicated, right? Actually, no, it's not. You don't have to be a trader on Wall Street to get a handle on your money. TV shows often instill fear to keep you believing you can't understand it or do anything yourself. If dealing with your finances brings up a lot of other F words, then you need to read All Ladies Should Use the F Word, A Guide to Loving Your Finances by Kathy Cook Noble. Kathy helps you take control of your finances and leave the other F word, fear, in the dust. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I am Kathy Cook Noble, and this is the Inspired Choices Network you're listening to. And this is Financially Speaking, where we talk all things finance and break it down so you understand it yourself. And today we were talking about the cost of divorce. So we talked about the emotional cost, we talked about the financial cost. There's, uh, I, and I missed actually telling you because I said a lot of lawyers get wealthy during divorces, but a lot of bankruptcy trustees get a lot of business out of divorce too. And that's because the emotion runs so high that it ends up financially destroying one of the or two of the parties and they end up going bankrupt. And to me, that is the tragedy, a financial tragedy of all. It's a tragedy of a, a separation in some cases. In some cases, would be it business or marriage, it's a great thing because it wasn't a working relationship that was healthy, it was more toxic, and in some cases it's very healthy and very good that the divorce is happening. The unfortunate part is where the financial, for me, the unfortunate part is where you, the financial part steps in and people just try and ruin each other financially, and I think that's tragic. Why not try and preserve wealth that you created together and keep as much of it as you possibly can? So what I look at with people in this particular situation is we have to figure out what the, what's separate versus the marital property. So what's yours and what's ours together? We have to look at valuing and dividing the property. How much is it worth? Who gets what? How do we split it up? We have to look at debt, credit, and bankruptcy. We have to make sure we're, you know, that can, that can affect your credit. That can obviously build up debt, which can lead you into bankruptcy, which can, make even a more more of a setback for you financially to recover from. But you can still recover. There's absolutely no problem. Like, there's no reason that you can't recover. It just takes a little bit of work. We have to look at child and spousal support. So whether or not there's children involved, whether or not they sh they're of age where they should be getting support, whether or not there's spousal support, if one spouse made a significant amount of money more than the other, is somebody going to be paying the other spouse support? We have to look at estate planning and insurance issues because if we have put together a, in a marriage situation that uh, this is the plan that we have and beneficiary of insurance policies is laid out as the person that you're divorcing, that might need to be changed. Um, in some cases, insurance is required to each have on each other and while the children are young. And in that case, we have to look at the way it's set up and the way it's laid out. We have to look at estate planning in the sense that um, how are we going to separate out uh, a business, uh, properties, other real estate, uh, however, if we had an estate plan and it's a marriage and we had it together, how how is that going to look now that it's not going to the other person? We have to look at retirement plans, pensions, RSPs, any kind of investments. How do they get separated out? 
Um, pensions obviously have a lot of locked in, no access at this time kind of scenario that you have to look at. So how does that get accounted for? You have to look at options for the matrimonial home. Does one person stay and the other one buy out the other person? Do you sell it? Uh, what's the situation there? Uh, you have to look at any tax problems because it, if in a marriage there's a separation and divorce, it can create some tax issues. So that's there's a lot of things more than just I don't want to be living under the same roof as you that we need to consider. Uh, we have to analyze your any financial implications. So if there's if if <laughs> and I say if because I I know it's very rarely the very first settlement is the very first one that goes to the final stage. But there's going to be different in, offers of of settlement and divorce proposals. So we have to look at each proposal to see how it is financially implicating or uh, affecting the other person and both parties. If there's um, a, one financial, for example, if there's one divorce proposal and if we change it a little bit, it might save tax for people or it might be more efficient to do it a different way. We have to look at how the proposals work. We have to provide uh, litigation support to divorce lawyers. If, for example, in the first year it's not settled, then even though you're legally separated for a year, there might be temporary support that needs to be paid during that time. Um, and then you might have to talk to, depending on how much money and and how complicated the estate is, you might need to get accountants or financial advisors or lawyers to help with that untangling of it. So a divorce is, has a lot of parts to it. It's not just the the, the big part, of course, is going to be the emotion and the upset and the aftermath of that. But there's a lot of other pieces that also need to be considered. And that's why if it's possible, and and I always encourage this if it's, if it, if it is truly possible, and I believe it is always possible. It's a choice that we make just like anything else in our lives. We choose to, to go skydiving or we choose not to. We choose to have an amicable divorce or we don't. And we can only control ourselves. I am completely aware of that. And if but but if both parties choose to look at this in a less emotional way and more practical way, then both sides can save money. Both sides can come out ahead, and both sides can preserve uh, some sort of uh, emotional control for themselves because it's going to be emotionally charged no matter what. It's a huge change in your life, and it's a huge change to your. Sometimes it's a huge shock to your system if you don't know about it. So. It doesn't have to be, and I'm not. This none of at no point am I saying that you have to stay friends afterwards. That's not what I'm saying. If you can, fantastic. If it's a marriage situation and there's children involved, you're going to be in each other's lives forever. So, if you can make it as amicable as possible, why wouldn't that be the best thing for you for the kids? Because as you get older, it's less stress for the kids. They don't have to worry about talking about one person or the other and upsetting somebody. So there's so many considerations to take with divorce. So the cost is not just financial. The cost is also the emotional part of it. And it's for other people too. So hopefully that shed a little bit of light on the cost of divorce. There's just so much more to it. I realize that. And I've scraped the surface and made it as simple as possible. And I get it's not always that simple. But I'm hoping that we can make it a little bit nicer for each of the people involved in the parties that have been through a divorce, be it business or be it marriage. Um, there's always ways that we can make it a little bit less of an impact on them emotionally and scarring. So hopefully that helped a little bit and shed some light, broke it down, made it a little bit simpler for each of us to deal with. We will be dealing with other financial topics going forward. I've got some great suggestions that came in for uh, helping the youth with their new job, new money, and also incorporating your business. Why would you do that? How would you do that? What What's the point? Why would all that take place? So stay tuned, and we will have lots coming up. Join us again here on the Inspired Choices Network. Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook-Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.